Year 10 and 11, welcome to your analysis of Benvolio in preparation for your English literature exam. Very quickly then, his name, Benvolio's name, literally means goodwill. So we know that that is going to be synonymous with his character. And he is the peacekeeper throughout the play. In Act 1, Scene 1, in his first appearance, when the servants are fighting, he says, Part fools, put up your swords, you know not what you do. And this reminds us of Christ's last words on the cross. Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Just as Christ is a peacemaker, Benvolio also takes on this role. Again in Act 1, Scene 1, I do but keep the peace, put up thy sword. So other instances of him attempting to um, stop or pause the feud, obviously it's futile. Um, and I suppose that's another way in which fate is working against Romeo and Juliet. He tries to stop the fight. He ends up taking part in it, doesn't he, With uh, when Tybalt arrives. Afterwards, he talks to Romeo's parents and promises to find out why Romeo has been acting depressed. He meets up with Romeo, who tells him the problem is that he's in love with a girl who isn't interested in him. In ho hopes of helping Romeo get over Rosaline, Benvolio and also Mercutio convince Romeo to crash the Capulet party. They'll compare Rosaline to the other women there and and hopefully Romeo will see that she's not all that. And he says, examine other beauties. So he's telling Romeo to look at other women. Remember in the beginning of this play, there is a lot of references to eyes and eyesight, which is Shakespeare reinforcing the fact that Romeo's supposed love for Rosaline isn't real, it isn't deep, it isn't genuine. So Benvolio persuades Romeo that really he should look at other women. Now, by Mercutio and also Benvolio encouraging Romeo to crash the ball, this has a direct influence on the events in the rest of the play because by crashing the Capulet ball, he meets Juliet. Um, act 2, scene 1 and Act 2, scene 4 then. Benvolio and Mercutio try to figure out where Romeo has disappeared to. They soon give up and head home. The next day, Benvolio and Mercutio still don't know where he is. They know that Tybalt has challenged their friend to a duel. Benvolio says he is sure Romeo will uphold his honour and fight Tybalt. When the nurse shows up, Benvolio joins Romeo and Mercutio in the, gen Mercutio in the general mockery of the woman. So we'll get this. Tybalt, the kinsman to old Capulet, hath sent a letter to his father's house. A challenge on my life. Romeo will answer it. So your translation's on the right there. Shakespeare's on the left. Benvolio says that Romeo will answer the challenge that is placed upon him. This is obviously Shakespeare showing us the secrecy of the marriage. The fact that the, the friends and the family of the lovers don't even know. And this, again, is fate working against him because Romeo won't fight Tybalt. Act 3, scene 1. As usual, Benvolio tries to avoid fighting with the Capulets, but gets drawn into it. When Tybalt strolls in, Benvolio tries to get everybody to calm down, much like Act 1, Scene 1. He tells Mercutio and Tybalt either to chill or to continue their argument in private. And as usual, no one listens to him, and Benvolio has to witness Tybalt and Mercutio dueling with each other when Mercutio dies. He also then sees Romeo and Tybalt fight, and Tybalt dies. Benvolio tells Romeo he has to run away or the prince will punish him with death. When the prince arrives at the scene of the slaughter Benvolio explains what has happened much like act one scene one where he explains what has happened so he's the, he's the peacemaker and he's trustworthy the characters trust him to reveal what's gone on I pray thee good Mercutio let's retire the day is hot the capels abroad and if we meet we shall not escape a brawl for now these hot days is the mad blood stirring look at the fact that he repeats that it's a hot day that again is I suppose very loosely pathetic fallacy in the sense that it represents the hot-headed, fiery Tybalt who's going to come in and cause a fight. And here Benvolio's begging Mercutio to retire. Um, so as I say, he always plays the peacekeeper and he wisely, wisely notes that a brawl will be inevitable. Again, fate, according to Benvolio, violence is always inflamed by the summer heat. Uh, I hope it's just very quick revision on Benvolio has been useful and massive good luck in your English literature exam.